Classes this time. Thought you'd get the sweater right away? I don't think so. So once we're in Android Studio, there's a lot of shit going on. If something didn't load right or is telling you something is wrong, search the error or ask us in the comments. In this lesson, we're going to do a quickie tour and tweak some XML. The top bar has a bunch of buttons. If you hover over them for a second, there will be a pop-up telling you what it does. Below that is the navigation bar that shows us exactly where the open file is in the app's directory structure. Right now, it's the XML file for our activity. Below that is our project's file structure. By default, it's open to only show the files we edit in the app directory. But if you want to see your full project structure, click the drop-down and select Project. We'll stick with Android for now. The main directories we're going to be working in are Java, which holds our main activity class, the brains of our app. And then the layout folder within Res, short for resources, holds our main activity XML file that controls the layout of the home screen. It also holds launcher icons, images, and other defaults for that. To the right of the project pane, we have our text editor where all the magic happens. This is where we'll be writing the sweet code to make our app run. Right now it's design view, an interface for building the layout of our app. We can drag the widgets on the left side onto our phone screen. Then on the right side is our component tree that shows all the stuff on our screen. Right now it's just the words hello world, which is a text view. Views are kind of the generic term for any item we put into our app's layout. Below that is the properties of whatever view we have selected. If we wanted to make the text size of Hello World bigger, select Hello World by clicking on it, then click into the properties pane. If we just start typing text size, it will automatically search for that property, and we input 100 dp. dp stands for device pixels, which is a size measurement that helps standardize sizing across devices. If your phone is 1920 by 1080, like the Nexus 5, you can't use actual pixel measurements, or your text will be ridiculously small. Put in 12 pics, and you'll see. What is this, an app for ants? What is this? A center for ants? What? Click the text display at the bottom. This is the XML creating our layout. The design view is just a preview of this file. Android uses XML for a lot of configuration files. XML is similar to HTML, but lets you make tags say whatever the hell you want. It gives you a consistent way to structure data with an opening and closing tag, plus attributes. The change we made to text size was applied to activity XML automatically. We can also edit the XML directly, and the design view shows that change. Let's make the text size 50 and look back at the design view. Okay, cool. Now our text is half the size. But this is just a preview of the greatest app in the world. We can't interact with our app on this screen. We need an emulator to run our app. An emulator creates a virtual phone on our computer. It's not as good as the real thing, but it's close and so convenient. You know, like masturbation emulates actual sex, but just not quite as good. Click the little phone icon, which is the AVD Manager. This is where we create our Android virtual devices or emulators. You can launch the default emulator by clicking the green play button next to it. But let's run it from Android Studio. Close AVD and click the small green play button on the toolbar. If an emulator was already running, we could choose it, but let's choose launch emulator. Now this will be running really, really slow if you're launching it for the first time, so be patient. Android Studio is building you a phone within your computer. A computer within a computer. An Inception computer. We'll fast forward. Okay, cool. We see our app. In real life, use an emulator called Jenny Motion. It's really easy to get started with and is way faster than the emulators you create in Android Studio. We'll post links below. Let's do one last thing before we show you how to run this. Get rid of that action bar. We don't need it. Click the manifest folder and open androidmanifest.xml. This file is a configuration for a bunch of stuff. We're looking for app theme. It's prefixed with the at sign and style, which means it's referencing a file in our resources directory called styles.xml. We'll open this and edit the app theme line. Delete dark action bar and start typing no action bar. You'll see autocomplete working for you. Thanks, Android Studio. Okay. You can also hit Control or Command Spacebar to see a list of autocomplete options. In the next lesson, we're gonna get our hands dirty laying out our app. Go take the quiz and hope that it's hot in here.